killing me knowing that I'm not gonna be able to, here to see the whole thing run. It really makes me upset when you don't get to see <laughs> a water feature running after you put in that kind of work. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. All right, everybody, the beginning of day four. Three days of work done, two more to go. We have today and tomorrow to get all the way up past the bridge. Finished up this waterfall yesterday. It's gonna be so awesome. And I think what I'm so, so excited about is we've got probably, that's a 5,000 pound rock. That's like a 3,000 pound rock. Then you have a couple like 2,000, 1,000 pound rocks back up in there. We have five, eight, 10, I don't know, 12,000 pounds of stone to create about a 15 to 13 inch high waterfall right in here and it all is really just trying to get it to look like one big rock and so that water is going to come ripping through that opening up in there move through all of this hopefully drop here definitely dropping through here all right next to these step stones it took me a while yesterday it was awesome that alan and jack were here so i spent some time on here put a couple hours into foaming all this getting all those bib liners and stuff done and then they went up there and started digging some more and then after lunch we came in and you guys have seen all of this just taking you again through kind of the course of the water but then after lunch we hit it hard once we got the liner in we were able to start setting some of our urns we found this amazing rock right here this big tall guy oh of course that sun's gonna hit it let's see there we go we found this amazing rock that almost looked like it's a glove holding the big giant large urn. We also have this really cool piece of driftwood that's almost got its arm <laughs> around the backside over there holding the medium. And then I have to finish this small one. Each one of these we've drilled out with a hole saw to accept a two inch pipe, put in lights up in here. This will bubble up. The lights will hit that agitating water up on here and then also hit the canopy of those trees up in top there. So I've got this one done. I got this one done. I still have to do that one once we get that done we'll come in here and i think alan and jack are going to start working on setting these and then we should be alan i think we'll be past that bridge today oh easily right yeah, for sure we're gonna set the bridge a lot like we set walls inside of a pond. We'll dig out a trough for a base material. The liner will go in over the trough. We'll throw the base material on top of the liner. That'll give us a little wiggle room to set our walls that are gonna support the bridge at the right height. For three guys, we're kicking butt. Happens just because of the amount of expertise and experience on this job. Everybody knows exactly what they're doing and uh, we're able to just kind of keep plowing through it. Nobody's asking what's next. We all just go, go, go. But a lot of times, like on day four on jobs like this, I start getting a little tired. Definitely a little sore. <laughs> Two more days for me, and then Jack's got another week out here with the rest of his team coming out here to finish all the edges and everything else. And it's killing me, knowing that I'm not gonna be able to here to see the whole thing run. But it's still so much fun to get it to that point. All right, guys, hold on tight. We're gonna see how much we can get done today, and I'll check in with you right around lunchtime. Bye. <laughs> Guys, I promised I'd show you where we were at at lunchtime. Just finished lunch, we're getting back at it. So you can see we've got the three urns hooked up. We're running one five to nine to all three of them. They'll tee off in the back over there with ball valves to each one. We got lights in them. You can also see we started doing some cobble type stuff. I love doing this where we mix in different size levels of aggregate. So here's more of a two to three inch. Then we've got more of a four to six inch up in there. And then this area that's kind of left open, we're gonna get more of like a pea gravel type size. Even back in through here, 
here. So this big stuff kind of caught the pea gravel. You know, as that fast water moved underneath the bridge, it moves that small gravel where it deposits, where water's gonna pool up a little bit more. And then as it gets rolling faster again, it can't move the big stuff. So we leave that and then it deposits the little stuff back where we get more of the pools. Jack and Alan have been sitting over here. They've set all of our elevations for our bridge. Hey Jack, you wanna just kind of explain what we're doing here? You know, when I asked you to come help me with this project, <laughs> I thought you'd be working more. Oh my God. <laughs> You see that? All right, so here's what we're doing. <laughs> We've got a bridge coming off of the front entrance to the house. Super cool, we're gonna use some reclaimed timbers that we found behind the barn. Manuel's in there right now planing them down so we can actually put them together this way, coming off. There's a concrete platform here. In order to make that happen, we have to build a base to hold the bridge. We don't wanna move it an inch once it's done. So what we did was when we excavated this stream section, we dug two troughs to allow for this base gravel. Then we put in our fabric, our liner, then another layer of our fabric, and now we're putting this base gravel and this stuff is gonna set the elevation for the bottom of the block. We're going two courses high with the block, and the way they're building the bridge is gonna be two runners working this way. They'll set right on top of that block, and it'll be just a seamless component. With that, that wood look with some boulders around, it's gonna be super cool. I love that you found those timbers too, just yeah. because the bringing in a wood element here or there on a project like this, with so much rock, another stone bridge just wouldn't look right. Well, we changed gears on it. Finding those timbers was the kind of like the aha moment for us. And it's really gonna tie in the cedar door up here in front is really going to tie yeah, in with got, the cedar. wood over the windows. I mean, there's there's wood used on the outside of the house, so why not bring that into the, yeah. the design here? It's going to look great. And what a cool, awesome entrance to any house. Talk about curb appeal. This alone is just going to look insane, but it kind of starts here, and if you remember, it goes all the way down to that waterfall, which is all the way down there. Maybe the longest residential feature I've ever done maybe I'm trying to remember but it is big all right if we can get that bridge in well we're probably not getting the bridge in today huh Are we getting the bridge in today oh, built the bridge yet. <laughs> we just laugh <laughs> no <laughs> And a day on our, well it's Thursday, so we have one more day, so fourth day. Yes, it's been a long one, and I think, I don't know if you know how sunburned I am, but I'm pretty sunburned. Anyhow, long day, we killed it though. I wanted to show you the progress, so much happened. Uh, I think at lunchtime I showed you all of this stuff happening over here, and then after lunch we kind of moved through this section, over and through here. One of my favorite rocks of all time is this big rock. Just imagine, <laughs> this is his driveway. <laughs> this is the driveway. Matt is such an unbelievable customer. He's like, don't worry about it. I knew there would be some damage and stuff, and so we gotta obviously clean all this up for him and get his driveway back. But now we're working on that front door entrance right here. 
So we spent a great deal of time. I spent a great deal of time while Jack worked over here. Jack and Alan worked on that waterfall over there, but getting this all set up. So we've got the excavated area here, put some base material down. Then we can set a foundation, whether it's a bridge or wall stones or whatever we're gonna do, this is the best method we've ever come up with. But we have a big giant cedar bridge, really help tie in with the front door look. I just love the way this is gonna transition. Then he's got an unbelievable stonemason that's gonna do a patio all the way up to the front door with a bunch of flat work and it's just gonna be incredible. You'll come across this, that stream moves through here. Of course you see this gorgeous rock right off to the right. We're gonna do some more cool rock work right in through here. And then that stream just twists and turns and twists and turns. As you move through, you're gonna see the urns bubbling at night. It'll be insane because once these things all leaf out, that'll all be lit up with those wavy marks all over the canopy of the trees. And then that stream just moves and zigzags all the way down to the pond. It's gonna be insane. This waterfall that Jack and Alan have been working on, again, looks like just one big solid rock. This weathered sandstone has all this cragginess to it. And so this is gonna come down through here, drop kind of into this area, move through this tight little channel. We'll of course get some lights in there. And then we're hoping right where that shovel spade is, we can bleed off a little bit of water and let some of that water move through this area. It'll make more sense when that's gone, but hopefully that all turns out. And then our spheres obviously go back up in here, which is the headwaters to this whole thing. Again, as it moves underneath the cool cedar bridge and off it goes. So I think we killed it today. We did so good. A lot, a lot of physical labor, moving little tiny aggregate stuff, scooping up gravel out of big super sacks and so on and so on, but I uh, love it. And uh, we're gonna hang out here with Mr. Matt tonight. We call him Uncle Matt, we call him Cousin Matt, we call him all kinds of things at this point. But uh, Matt's been awesome. And we're gonna hang out up here on the balcony, eat some Thai food and enjoy the evening overlooking the pond. This place is gonna be insane when it's all finished. We'll see you tomorrow. You guys keep hanging on one more day bye <laughs> no, actually, it's just it's the uh, that rock in the back. We're gonna have to move it, and lay it down. It's just proportionally. It's just way too big and tall, and we want to get it down so then that way they still got a clear view out of that window, so they're looking at the back side of a rock. I think it'd be nice too, like as they walk through the you know the front porch there, to see a little bit more of the urns. We'll be able to look right over. Yeah, there. I mean it looks incredible from here, the front side, but that back side looks ridiculous. So we're gonna take this guy. We're gonna lay it flat the way it came out of the earth. You can almost tell that's where the soil came up to, and then the light can start so there's a very defined line in here we'll lay this thing down flat get it to sit in here just right and then we don't have to worry about hiding this ugly ugly orange side
that's a wrap guys. Day five out here. I'm thinking it's about 200 some feet of stream. I think we set well over 100 tons of stone. Way more than, Way more than. I'm looking over there because there he is. Hey, <laughs> yeah, we set well over 100 tons of stone. It's incredible what the three of us got done in a week. Four giant seams. 200 feet of liner, 30 foot wide, 20 foot wide. You've excavated the whole thing. We ran the plumbing all the way up there. We set the urns, we set the spheres. We built unbelievable waterfalls. Base for a bridge. Base for a bridge. We did a lot. <laughs> well, I dug the plumbing today, so next week we're gonna finish this. And I really am sad that you won't be here. Neither will Alan. Alan, get in here really quick. The hardest thing, and it doesn't happen often, in fact, it really makes me upset when you don't get to see <laughs> a water feature running after you put in that kind of work. We killed ourselves this week. Yeah, <laughs> it was a lot of work, but it's still fun, you know? Yeah. Building ponds with friends is rewarding, and even the tornado day yep. was still productive. Memorable, I guess. Cool. Memorable in a way. <laughs> <laughs> so we went from one extreme to another. Today was hot. There's no way it was 70 degrees. It had to no, be 80, 80 plus. Today. Which in the middle of summer you'd beg for, but today it just kind of got me towards the end of the day. We were all dragging, but we pulled through. Did you show them that epic waterfall up there? It just looks so yeah, incredible. Yeah, it's so cool. This one looks really good too. I like this one, like the way you finished it off. It looks like one big rock outcropping. So does that, that one. That one, I think, looks even better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like really go, like, go look at it. It's amazing. Jeez, I wonder why he's saying you that. Guys, you guys tell me, but, but the only way you're going to ever see this thing running is check out my good friend Jack Harju over at Atlantis Water Gardens, where you can see the reveal of this incredible project. Make sure you go over there because it is worth the extra push with your finger to, try to check it out. Hey guys, hope you like this. You know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, tell me your favorite part, and uh, we'll keep doing it. Bye.